Cursor is one of the best AI coding assistants. They just launched Copilot++ a couple weeks ago. Let's play with it. So one of the cool things that people don't really realize they can do with AI coding assistants. I'm gonna highlight this position equally below first element. Remove comments, gonna let that rip. Let's say you wanna run something at the same time. You can be running multiple prompts. You can see this one's kicking off. I'm gonna go ahead and fire off another prompt here. Add a new and remove node button. Okay, let's go ahead and accept this. Great, so this just created nice aligned items for us. We now have our add and remove button. Go ahead and accept that. Let's take a look at one of Cursor's new features, Copilot++. You can think of Copilot++ just like GitHub Copilot where you have inline auto completion helping you out, but it's supposed to be the next level. It's supposed to be aware of more context and the a big highlight for me here is it's auto-completing multiple lines without your cursor being necessarily right in the position you need to make the completion. Like in this example, they're firing off three completions at the same time. We have add node, remove node. Let's go ahead and hop back to our application here. So you can see we got our add and remove button in the top right there. We'll fix that in a second. So we're just gonna start typing function add node and then we're gonna stop. So let's see what it gives us here. Pretty decent. So we can hit add node here and it'll just add a new node at the bottom. It looks good and remove node let's go ahead and get remove node written now okay and you can see here remove random nodes coming in picking a random node and automatically selecting that for us let's get our script back there great we'll save and then we'll update this to be remove random node refresh and there we can see it's removing completely random nodes we can add nodes back hit refresh add nodes back you can see we're adding some new nodes there let's go ahead and update this so that we're not just adding this so i'm gonna go ahead and say uh, generate random nodes not just five we're going to let that run and at the same time we're going to come down here and let's update the button let's say position at bottom of screen uh, bottom let's say 200 picks come back up here we'll accept this change save see how that looks and now our add node is adding a bunch of random nodes but it's not updating in the right position so it's just placing it you know in the same spot so we can keep hitting it we're getting that node in the exact same spot every single time right there let's go ahead and fix that Let's accept this previous change here, hit save. So this only repositioned our remove button. That's fine, we'll just copy that. We'll copy the style, hit enter here, and get this fixed here. So we have both of our buttons. And I actually want this to be in the bottom center of the screen. So let me go ahead and just update this. I'll say wrap in div, fixed bottom screen, flex, horizontal. We'll let that run while we update this to move nodes downward based on the lowest Y position of all nodes. So it's gonna go ahead and grab the new lowest position and add 500 to that or add 800 to that. That looks great. Let's make sure that um, this like position actually exists. I'm gonna accept this change down here. So this looks good. Looks like it's just setting up that styling for us. Hit save there. We got add and remove at the bottom of the screen now. That looks good. You can see here our add node is coming in and it's pushing down 100 pixels. That's really great. We're moving really quickly here and we're not doing a whole lot. So I want this to be in the center. I'm going to highlight this. I'm just going to say position elements in the center. Okay, great. It's got the left. It's got the transform, save, and there we go. So now our buttons, our controls are centered right in the middle of the screen there at the bottom. That looks great. How can I access the Y position of our nodes here? So I'm using this static elements list here. We need to actually pull the nodes from our node list. So we're using use view flow. It's a great library. It allows you to create interesting graphs, interesting charts programmatically in Vue.js. There are respective versions for Svelte and React, whatever your favorite flavor of front end frameworks are. There's a version for you. So let's just keep cooking here. I'm gonna go ahead and add nodes to this and edges, great. And then we're just going to come in here and say use um, nodes instead and just hit enter. See what it does there. There we go. So, so it's using nodes instead of elements. Elements is kind of our static list. And you can see here it did pick up on that position and it's got the node positioning there. So should get the lowest position and now it's typed out because it's coming right out of the library. So if we hit add node now, you can see 100 pixels getting pushed down. That's fantastic. And let's go ahead and create another function. I don't want to keep scrolling down as we add nodes. I want it to just resize automatically. That function is being called here, fit to view. I'm just gonna highlight some of this 
and say after adding nodes, call fit to view. And what we'll actually do is, I wanna do this in a view watcher so that we don't have to manually do this every time. So basically if these nodes update, I want us to reactively call fit to view. So what I'm gonna do is kind of do the same thing. I'm gonna say, instead of just after adding nodes, I'm just gonna ask cursor when nodes change in a watcher call fit view. It's gonna let that fly and there we go. It deleted the on pane ready. I don't want it to do that. So I'm just gonna add a follow up instruction, keep on pane ready. One of the most key components about true AI coding assistance is that they're iteratively controllable. You need to be able to correct mistakes that it makes, correct mistakes that you ask it to make. So this looks good. I'm gonna hit accept here. And I'm not sure we need this nested fit to view call. We'll see. I'll refresh, hit add node. So that's not working. So I need this fit to view function. I'm not sure where this comes from. There we go. So there's a fit view right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and alias this. I'm gonna say, fit view from hook. And then whenever this gets called, I'm just going to call this method right here. So let's see how that works. There we go. So now whenever we're adding new nodes, we're automatically calling that resize function so we can see our new nodes, right? So that looks great. Let's test out Copilot++ some more. I wanna see some more of this magical auto-completion in the works. So let's go ahead and you know do something where the Copilot can pick up on what we want to see happen next. We'll start editing all the labels, right? So we'll update these to you know be like little LLM agents. So we'll say, you know, this is a um, LLM coder number one. And we just want to keep going down the list. Exactly. So it picked up on that right away. You can see here on the auto completion to the right. Now trying to auto complete it all for us. So I'm going to hit tab and that's done. So right away picked up on that change. Allowed us to get a lot done really quickly. Let's keep going down the line. I'm going to just highlight this here and bam, it's auto completing for us. Of course, we're just going to hit tab and let's go ahead and add some labels here to our edges kind of following that same line so i think we can just do label and let's see what we want to do here so okay cool so it's looking at this relationship source one to source three very cool let's go ahead and just keep that going there you go so auto completes are coming in that looks really really great love that and so you can see here now we have the edges labeled as well so if we move these a little bit you can see here we have two three four and you know our edges now have labels so we can see llm coder one going to llm coder two and then we have uh you know four and then we have five so this looks good so let's go ahead and look at one of Cursor's keystone features in my mind, the ability to add reference documents. So I'm gonna hit Command L here, open up the chat window, and I'm gonna hit at docs, click on this. You can see I've already added a couple of Viewflow docs. It's been running these prompts with information about nodes and examples. I'm gonna hit add new doc here, and I wanna pull in the edge documentation. So let's look at the edges. So here's the introduction to nodes. I wanna pull in the edges. So let's look at edges. And you can see here, it has a bunch of information about you know, composing new graph flows using edges. So there's the remove edges function and et cetera, right? So let's go ahead and look at how we can set up, you know, some of these step edges, some of these smooth step edges. But of course we're gonna have our AI coding assistant do it for us. We're gonna be using cursor here. So I'm gonna grab this URL and I'm gonna go ahead and go back in the docs. I'm gonna hit add new doc, paste this in. I'm gonna update the name because I wanna be able to reference it in inline command prompts. Edges, hit confirm. That's to start loading in they're indexing that and then as soon as that comes in we can start asking specific questions related to these docs so i want to say update our edges and our graphs make these step edges and also color the edges so let's just go ahead and ask how to do that so how can we update our edges and, and then i'm going to reference the app.view file to make them step edges and change the color of our edges so I'm just gonna ask that question. Let's see what it comes up with. You can see it's reading both the edges um, and the theme flow and the theming docs. So let's go ahead and just see what it's saying here. Pull this out a little bit. So those are all of our nodes and now it's got the edges. So it's saying just use type. So I'm gonna highlight this and start an inline instruction. Add type step to each edge. Let that run. Great, and how do we update the style? This will create red edges for us. Let's accept this code change, and then let's go ahead and just drop in this new edge color. 
Let's see what that looks like. Okay, nice, that totally worked. You can see here we're using the new step edge and you can see that our edge colors are indeed red. So it just kind of pulled that from the docs. We then just shoved the code in. Um, it would be great if these coding assistants, you know, had clean insert functionality. I'm not sure how well this would have worked if I just hit apply diff. Let's go ahead and try it. So I'm gonna go ahead and you know, remove that and just hit apply diff. Yeah, so the apply to functionality looks like it's not exactly working. That's fine. We can copy and paste in some improvements to be made there. But you can see here we added some documentation and now we can close the chat interface. I don't really like the whole chat on the side. You're not really operating on your code. It's good when you're in explorative phases, looking through documentation, trying to solve a specific problem. But I like to keep that closed for the most part and just really focus on the value of the code. So you can see this is looking pretty good. As we add nodes, we want our nodes to create an edge Edge to something that already exists. So I'm going to go ahead, minimize all this, and I'm going to, after add nodes, just say, we'll say create random edge. And then we're going to go ahead and pass in the node ID that was just created. And now we're going to go ahead and hit enter, enter. And we're looking for Copilot++ plus plus to auto create this function for us. So based on the context of the file, it should be able to see what we're looking for here, right? We'll say function, there we go, create custom edge. And that'll grab a random node and generate an edge and then go ID to ID. That looks good. Let's go ahead and see how that does. So we'll hit add node. Nice. That looks good. We'll hit another add node. So this looks decent, but it's a little backward. We we have our source node ID is the new node that we just created. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say new node ID. So I'm gonna manually change this. It's seeing these errors come in. Let's go ahead and see if Copilot can update this for us. There we go. So it's seeing that we wanna update these. We'll go ahead and hit tab. Just highlight this next one. Just hit tab again. Great. And then what I'll do here is just do a quick highlight. I'll say swap source and target. Put enter and it'll swap those for us really quickly. So we'll hit save and let's go ahead and look and we'll hit add node, add node, add node. Very good. So except for this last one here, it looked like we got all of our new nodes getting changed to the previous node, which is good. There we go. So got the node chain there and that's looking great. So those edges are coming in. So we'll do one more thing here, find new X position. And we'll go ahead and just let that auto complete. I just want to kind of fan out and, okay, so it's gonna find the lowest X position and just kind of increment. That's fine, we'll go ahead and use that. So this will just set things off a little bit and we'll use that for the new X position down here. And you can see their Copilot++ plus plus again, helping us out immediately. It's definitely more advanced than the default built-in GitHub Copilot that is, you know, just kind of making assumptions on the next available token. It really does look like Copilot++ plus plus from cursor is going the next step and saying, we'll make the change wherever you need it, not just right in front of your cursor. So if we hit add node. Now you can see we're branching down into the right and that's really great. So it's selecting a random node and it's pushing it into the new node. And you can see we have that reference coming in and just like that, nice. So we have a kind of interesting node graph system getting built here. We're using co-pilots. We're getting this done really quickly. If you were to take away any couple themes from how to use AI coding assistance. It's really all about up leveling where you sit on the stack, right? It's a lot less about writing individual lines of code. And it's a lot more about high level manipulation of the logic of your application, right? Move yourself up the stack of decision making, focus less on the lines of code you're writing and focus more on the high level implementation. Think more like a product manager or product developer, or even like a UI UX engineer, except you're still in the code. You're still making the changes you're still in full control of the product the only difference is now you can run multiple prompts that write code for you automatically and give you results back fast if you want to enhance your engineering ability and stay relevant with all the crazy layoffs you need to give yourself an edge that's what we focus on on this channel we focus on how can we utilize technology llms AI coding assistance to create concrete value for us in our daily lives as engineers if that interests you if you want to see more content like this, hit the sub, hit the like. I'll see you in the next one.